The Dharmapada is a collection of verses uttered by the Buddha on various occasions throughout his life. Behind each verse, there is a story. This is one such story. The story of Kisagotami and the mustard seed. Once upon a time, there was a young woman called Kisagotami. She had come from a very poor family, but had married the son of a rich merchant. The merchant had suffered an unusual reversal of fortune. He had a store of gold, which had suddenly changed into charcoal, and he was ruined. A friend, seeing his distress, and obviously wise in the ways of magic spells and cures, told him to take the charcoal and sit in front of his shop, as if to offer it for sale. When people passed and said, Good sir, why do you sell charcoal while others sell such things as clothing, oil, molasses and honey? He was told to say, If I can't sell what belongs to me, what am I to do? But as the friend predicted, someone came along who saw something quite different. This happened to be Kisakotomi. She was wandering around the town from place to place, visiting every shop, when she came across the merchant sitting in front of his store. She asked, Good sir, why are you sitting here selling yellow gold? As instructed, the merchant replied, Where is the yellow gold? Give it to me. And Kisa Kotomi replied, Here it is, and picked up a handful of charcoal and gave it to the merchant. On receiving the charcoal, it was transformed back into his yellow gold. In keeping with his friend's instructions, the merchant asked Kisa Kotomi where she lived, and seeing she was unmarried, offered her as wife to his son, which she accepted. Then the merchant turned over all his wealth, said to be four hundred millions, into her charge. And so Kisa Kotomi settled into a new life, and within ten months of her marriage, she became pregnant and gave birth to a son. The child was her pride and joy, but by the time he was able to walk, he suddenly fell ill and died. Kisagotomi was stricken with so much grief that she was driven to the point of madness and refused to let her son be buried. Instead, she went out to find a cure. She went from house to house asking for any medicine that could help her son. It soon became well known that Kisa Gotomi was going around doing this, and a wise man taking pity on her, approached her and said, Good woman, I know of only one who can help you in your plight. He will have the medicine that you need. Who is it, good man? Tell me, I will go straight to him. It is the Buddha, good woman, the fully enlightened one. So Kisa Kotomi went to the Buddha and said to him, Teacher, I have been told by a wise man that you have the medicine that I need. Now the Buddha could see that Kisa Kotomi had accumulated within her much merit, which had now matured to the point where she could gain great insight. However, she was extremely distressed, and her mind was not sufficiently calm for her to receive a direct teaching. Instead, he used skillful means. He said the medicine she needed would be found when she brought him a mustard seed from a household where no one had died. Kisagotomi was overjoyed by the prospect and went to obtain the mustard seed from the household where none had suffered a death. But at each house, when she asked, Have any in this household died? Have you lost a son or a daughter? They all replied in the same manner. Many have died in this household. The dead are many, the living are few. House after house, village after village, town after town, the answer was the same. As she heard story after story of the bereavement of every household, finally her grief began to be quelled, and so she slowed down, and then she stopped and she wandered into the forest and gently laid down her child and buried his body. 
So she returned to the Buddha and he asked whether she had been successful in the task he had set her. She replied she had not, that the dead outnumber the living and no one is free from the loss through death. And so her heart and mind were now clear, and the Buddha spoke the following stanza to Kisa Kotami. The one who has settled her heart on sons and flocks and herds, with mind all tangled up in worldly pleasure, is swept away by death, just as a great flood sweeps away a sleeping village. And when the Buddha had spoken these words, great understanding arose in Kisa Gotami, and she attained stream entry, the first stage of enlightenment. So Kisa Gotami requested to be admitted into the Buddha's order of nuns, and so she was. She dedicated herself to the duties that were assigned to her, and one night when going to the great hall to light the lamp, she sat down and observed the flames, taking them as an object of meditation. She saw the tons of flames flaring up or flickering away, just like all living beings, some rising up, some falling away, except for those who attain Nibbāna. The Buddha perceived that Kisa Gosami was again on the verge of a breakthrough and appeared before her and pronounced the following stanza. Better than one hundred years of life of one who does not perceive the deathless state is just one day of life for one who does perceive the deathless state. At the conclusion of this stanza, even as she sat there, Kisa Gosami became fully enlightened, an arahat, complete with all the psychic powers.